Hello guys. In this session, we're going to understand how do you connect to mainframe systems on your personal computer? Some of you might be wondering, how do we get our own mainframe, right? So it is just, it is not like your any other uh, software that is freely available outside in the market. You can download Java, you can download Oracle, or you can download any other uh, software from your, you know, from the internet, but getting a mainframe software is not easy. So I'm going to sh show you how to uh, work with the uh, mainframes on your personal computer. If you have any questions on this, how to get this software, you can always ping me in the comments or you can always reach out to me uh, on the mobile number or the email address that I'm going to give you in the description section. Okay, so first we're going to click on this Hercules software. So it is it is going to open you a, a command uh, prompt like this. You have to press an escape here and it's going to show you a console. So now if you are a mainframer, you will know a little bit about uh, you know this screen. Uh, you may be a developer uh, or an administrator. If you're an administrator, you will know more about this. So here is the here are the disks that we have on uh, our mainframes, and this is the number of sessions this is the, these are the uh, sessions that you can uh yeah log in onto mainframes so it could be you could use one of these as a tso one of the second one as tics and the third one as some other uh, session etc so you will know more about it once i show you so now once after my mainframes is up and running so this means my mainframes is up and running if you see this screen now what you need to do is you have to Open an emulator, connect to the local host. So don't worry about the settings that needs to be done to this. I will explain all the settings once after you uh, reach out to me. And if you need this software, I will explain you all the settings. Uh, in this session, I'm just going to show you only the demonstration of how do you work with mainframes on your personal computer. So you have to open two, two uh, sessions here. So in the first section, First session, we're going to do the boot up of mainframes, initial program node, IPL. And in the second session, we can connect to our TSO session, TSO uh, option. Okay, so now I'm on the first session tab. So let me open here plus again. And I'm going to press the L button on the L a keyboard, key on the keyboard. So now it will show you, select the device for IPL. So which, which device you want to, uh, you know, boot. So if you see, I have opened two uh, mainframe uh, sessions here. So that's why it is showing two different assignments, IP address assignments. So now in the first session, I'm going to boot. So I'm going to give, press a key F on the keypad, keyboard. Now if you see, the CPU hasn't started yet. The minute when I press F here, that means I'm asking it to boot. CPU utilization is going to start. I press it and now you see the CP utilization has started and program status word uh, is being in use. And now if I go to that mainframe emulator, so you see something started. So it has started to bring up the mainframe. It is doing the IPL, initial program load. So what happens in this initial program load is it is going to bring up each and every subsystem slowly, one by one. So you, we know different. there are different subsystems in mainframes, right? Like TSO, TACS, JES, you know, et cetera, and et cetera. So all those things will be brought up one by one. So you see rack of is brought up and then TACS it will be coming up slowly. So now you see it's going to start DB2 as well, MQs, everything is going to start up one by one slowly. So this process takes, uh, let's like say, two to three minutes of time. It is just like bringing up your uh, Windows operating system. So when you press on the power button on your computer, so it boots up your operating system, Windows, right? So the same way it is bringing up all the services and the subsystems that we have on mainframes so that you can use those. So once after all the subsystems are up, we are going to log into TSO using the second uh, you know, uh, tab we have here. So observe that this is the this is the screen that it is showing here as of now. 
but once all the subsystems are brought up you will be seeing a different screen okay so let's take that out so now what is happening just two is getting initialized and see vtam started and You see, it has started S TSO. That means start TSO. Now we will go and see this tab. See, this the screen has changed. So now you can log into TSO using this option. So I'll allow it to completely boot. I'll allow it to completely finish the IPL, and then we can log into this uh, uh, TSO session so that we will be able to see everything. You can log into OMVS. You can log into uh, you know uh, DB2, CACS, everything. So, so let's give it uh, a minute time. Once after the complete boot up is done, then we can log in. You see now the DB2 has started. Okay. So let's, when DB2 is completed, I think all the subsystems are brought up. So now let's log in to TSO using. Okay. It is logging in. Okay. So this is your regular mainframe TSO screen. So using this, you can go to 3.4 and you can open the data sets that you have. And let me show you what all things that are available. It has, you can go to spool in this, like your regular mainframes. And You can, you have an OMV segment here. You have DB2 menu, and let's see what we have in DB2 menu. You have spoofy, you have decalgen, pre-compile, pre-program preparation, all those things, bind, run command option, different utilities to, we have, and you have QMF as well, which is query management uh, facility. and Let's see DB2 admin tool. Using this, you can view any table that you have created or existing table. System catalog. So let me open table, something. I'll just open some table. Owner, be anyone. Table. Okay, so let me just open some table. See, this is how you can open a DB2 table using system administrator catalog. And you also have a QMF, like I said. You have a file manager here using which you can open any files if you have a copy book, just like, you know, how you open your files in other tools like file aid or etc. And you also have rack of using which you can create your own uh, mainframe IDs for this mainframe and give access to others. So remember one thing on this mainframe, you have the complete control. You have access to, uh, you have admin access. You can create your data sets of your own with any sort of ID. It doesn't have to be your user ID using which you can log, you logged in. So you have a admin access. So now let's connect to CACS. So let me open another terminal and LCICS. So this is how you logged into CACS as well. Okay, so this is basically pretty much your regular mainframe. The only thing is you will not have any third party tools like, you know, Changeman, Endeavor, Expeditor, Intertest, all these are third party tools which will not be available, but you can definitely compile a COBOL program using a, a JCL that are available. Yeah, I'll show you.
if you see this is a cobol compile jcl okay and this is uh, bind jcl and this is linked jcl and this is cobol db2 run cobol normal jcl run and map and how do you uh, map uh, how do you you know compile a map this is jcl and you can also use assembler you know this is assembler uh, jcl using which you can compile and run the assembler and this is assembler map so basically all the jcls and everything are pre packed available on this mainframes uh, similarly you also have uh, cobol programs written mq cobol programs are written separately and you have some dbrm library where your dbrm will go and sit and you have a copy book library and you have c tcs basic map library where we have some map and uh, tcs basic programs are available and cobol source lib so you have we have already written some cobol uh, source uh, programs here using which you can kick start your coding and we also have some jcls that are readily available df sorts on this so you can you know basically start your coding with all these existing available members without having to write from scratch so now let's log off the first is regular log off only log off similarly from cics Okay, I logged off now. I have to shut down all the subsystems. Yes, shut all. Shut down all the subsystems. You see, all the subsystems that were brought up will be automatically shut down. Automatically shut down one by one. Again, this takes around two to three minutes of time. So once after that is done, you can shut down your uh mainframe circular system see p for purging so one good thing about this uh, uh software is it is not on a rental basis it is available for a lifetime so once you use this once you take the software it is available for a lifetime you don't have to pay rentals on a monthly basis uh, so you can use it forever and you don't even need to have an internet connectivity also to work with this because uh, all the data gets stored on your pc only so if you create a new cobol program a new jcl everything gets stored on your pc only it's not going to get stored in some other uh, mainframe system so your your windows thinks that you are using a mainframe system so you are connecting from windows operating system to an emulated uh, mainframe system using this emulator so like i said if you need this software uh, and if you want me to install this software you can always contact me on this uh, email id that i've given in the description okay so all the subsystems are brought down so now i will go to my console and press on the L. before I press escape key, you see the CPU utilization has been reduced or means like completely zero now. It was showing stars or asterisk up to here, but now it is only one star. That means the CPU is not being used. So here, press escape, you will come to the console. Uh, okay, I will close all these. So when you close those um, windows or the terminal, uh, you know, emulators tab, so you you observe that the assignment is also cleared. So there's only one assignment now, which is this one tab is open, which this is assigned to this IP address. Now just just press escape. It will come to the command prompt. Now just give exit. 
it exits the mainframe and your uh, session gets automatically disconnected. Now just simply close this. So this is how you can work with your mainframes on your personal computer. Thank you all.